Hi, so um, this is video two of my sort of unboxing, getting to know the Toyota Okaki Renaissance model. Ta da! Uh, I've gone and got it all set up on my sewing desk. I have a sewing desk. Uh, unlike other sewing YouTubers, I don't have an entire studio to sew in. I have a table. Uh, it is a proper sewing machine table, although my new machine, I don't think, is going to work completely with it. Uh, so it had like a little shelf that would go up and down so you could attach your sewing machine onto it. And when you weren't using it, you could actually lower the machine inside the table and cover it up. It was really, really good for keeping dust off it and from things getting broken and cats using it as scratch posts and things like that. Uh, I don't think this one would do it because the sewing table is probably from like the 1907 or something and the machine is obviously 2018. So things have developed since then and actually lots of people now just keep their sewing machines out. But um, I've got it all ready to go, except I haven't threaded it yet because I thought you would like to see how that works. But I've got it set up, I've got it plugged in, and I'm going to show you what it's like to use. So let's move, because it doesn't happen here. This is just my sofa, and um, my husband would cry if I did sewing on my sofa, because he'd get pins in places where he wouldn't want pins. So let's go. Okay, so here we are at my table. Like I said, I don't have a big room, I literally have one table. Uh, and here it is, ta -da! Um, But I do keep quite a lot of my sewing stuff in here. I do have a couple of suitcases of just fabric that I've collected over the years out in the garage, but most of it stays here. So I've literally just brought it over from the other table, I've set it down, I've got a spool of thread ready to go in, uh, and I have plugged it in. So it's very easy, the top one is the power, the bottom one is the foot, and there's a little button here. So this is the first time I've ever turned it on. I'm actually very excited. <gasps> Did you hear the noise? <laughs> My other one used to beep. I missed the beep. Anyway, so we've got some things on here. The first thing is we've got this little test. They obviously do like a quality test in the um, factory. I don't think I need that now. Uh, so it's already got a bobbin in. Uh, so literally to get to the bobbin you just pull that out, no buttons to press, nothing like that, really easy and the bobbin is in there. Now it's already put in so I'm not going to take that out, um, so I just want to see how easy it is to actually uh, sew with. So I'm going to put the bobbin case back on, it's already thread through the top and I'm going to do some different thread. So let's have a look to how we actually thread this sewing machine. Okay, so using our uh, quick guide that we came with it, so if you watch the unboxing, you'll know this is a little quick guide. It tells you what all the different stitches, oh, you can't see that from there. Oh, that's better. It tells you what all the different stitches are, uh, which ones you want to pick, and then when you flip it up, it tells you what to do. So I assume this, this well, the bobbin is already done, but we want to thread the spool. So that's how you thread a bobbin, or is that a spool too? We want to thread the needle. That's quite clear actually, isn't it? It sort of tells you how to get the thread through and then it tells you how to actually put it in the needle. Now this machine is very similar to my old one, it's just a little bit more, uh, it can do a bit more. So it is going to work very similar and it has a nice vertical spool pin, which I like because my other one had a horizontal one and I wasn't overly keen on that. So using our little quick guide that we have here, flip that up. Trying to get to stand, that's interesting. Uh, I've got a nice ball of yellow, so I'm just going to take the sticky off. A little tip, I always find that the sticky label on the end of spools just, just gets caught and it's annoying. So I now always take the little sticky stuff off because otherwise you, I just find it just gets in the way. Right, okay, so now I've got my spool, so let's follow these lovely instructions that... You can't actually see it. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, the thread on here. Like that. We take the thread. Now, really, really important before you start threading anything, you need to make sure that your presser foot is up. So there's a nice little lever like they all have on here up and down, up and down, up and down. But if it's down, um, when you uh, go to thread, you actually will find that your tension will all be screwed up. So you need to make sure your presser foot is up so that the tension is all sort of reset. Okay, and we're going to go around here and then it looks like we go from here 
around this little funny thing. Look how easy this is. And then down. And then up. Now I don't, can't see my hook. Where's my hook? There's my hook. Then over. Oh, it just sounds so nice. Okay, it's got like an auto needle feeder. I'm going to zoom in so you can actually see what that looks like. So the auto uh, needle feeder is really, really good, or needle threader, or whatever you want to call it. You need to have the needle in the highest position, like this. And you pull this little grey thing down, and this bit, bit goes straight through the needle, and then it will catch the thread. So you get your thread, pull that down into place, you bring it over this little hook on the side, little hook, in front of the needle. It's actually got some little bits. Oh, let's try that again, because I wasn't actually looking what I was doing. And I think it just goes up like that. No, am I missing it? What's going on? There we go. So not actually quite as easy as my help one, but anyway. Um, and then there's another little hook, I think. Yeah, around there. Probably should have done that first. Yeah, so it's a little little bit here. I think it's meant to sort of go go behind. There you go. So that's our needle thread. It will be much quicker next time. There'll be a next time. Now I'm going to do some tests. I'm just going to get a little little fat square out. Uh, one that my daughter won't mind me using. Pink. She doesn't like pink. Right. So I'm just going to do some tests. So uh, stitches. Let's just start off a nice straight stitch. So we've got the top and the bottom. Uh, let's have a look. So we've got all this little fun stuff. Oh, that looks fun, doesn't it? Oh, turn it off. I don't know what it does, but it was a fun present. Button to press. Let's zoom out so you can see what I'm actually pressing. So, like this button here, I'm, it's just too tempting not to press. And when you press it, it goes green, which is even more exciting. Okay, so the normal mode, when this button is not pressed, is just normal sewing. But when it is pressed, it puts it into our khaki mode, uh, which means that the foot, the hardy press on the foot pedal, uh, will determine whether it's a tiny stitch or a big stitch. Uh, so that's quite clever, although I'm not so good at that sort of thing. Uh, so at the moment, it's just in standard mode. Right, so we have needle up down, so that's down, uh, that's up. That's that's really nice actually. Uh, it's really really important. I'll show you in a minute why you need one of those. You have a start stop, so you don't have to use a press it foot. You can just press start and stop. That changes different things. So let's just see what happens. We're going to put this in here. Push down the press foot. I'm going to put my foot on the pedal. Oh, it's so smooth. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? I mean, I'm not even holding it, and it's just going straight. Look. Stitch, I see. That was fun. So this button here, uh, which is just underneath uh, the threading thing, if you press it once, it does one back stitch. If you press and hold, it does as many until you let go. Right, let's have a look at the stitching then. So we put it away. Right there, and then we're going to cut it so just round the edge. Turn it down, you can see there is a little thread cutter. So you just bring it out round the back, always pull the thread out in the direction you're sewing. Oh, now, considering I have done nothing, that's pretty good, although the tension is off a little bit because uh, you can see the uh, bobbin thread which means that the top thread is not pulling hard enough. So I think we need to increase the tension just a little bit. Let's have a little play. I, I'm assuming that is the tension adjuster. Anyway, let's see what happens now. See if this tension is any better. Always back stitch. There are some people that say you shouldn't need a back stitch, but I just think it's just easier, isn't it? 
So that tension's a bit better. There's not much difference in it, but it, I don't know if you can really see that, but it's a bit better. Let's go up a little bit more. It's got plus four. I assume the line is zero. Let's try again. Have a look. Getting there, getting there. So let's go with a five. Okay, so now I'm going to do one more because that was nearly perfect. So I'm on uh, plus five on the tension. It's just so smooth. It's lovely to use. Back. What's really nice actually is that when I back stitch, my needle doesn't break. That was one of the most annoying problems in the last couple of weeks. Um, gone through sewing and needles. So that is, that's reasonably good. I think we could say it's probably, this is very thin sort of cotton, so it's probably not going to get much better, but it's certainly better than it was. Uh, let's try a different stitch. What, what do we try? Let's try number three. So this is like the three lines, three straight lines. Let's see how it handles it. Uh, sometimes you need to reduce it if it's going to do more work. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's really nice. So that's if you need like a really, really thick stitch. Um, then you can do like the three lines all together but it, they're really really close together so it gives it a really really strong stitch and that's pretty perfect tension on there uh, then we've got, also, we've got all sorts of things on here we've got 23 which is um, like a really curvy stitch I wonder what that looks like oh that's 24 maybe do that another day 23 let's, let's go and press Yeah, that's nice. So that's done. Um, a really, really pretty curvy line. I'll show you. I'll put the camera down so you can actually see these different stitches. Okay, so you can just about make out the different stitches on this material. It wasn't actually the best colour to use, apparently. Uh, so we've got like the straight ones here where I was testing the tension. Then we've got the triple line one. And here, really faintly, you can see like the swirly one, which I really, really like, and that'll look really pretty on the bottom of hems and things. 